Okay, so our goal is to go through the seven steps looking at an algorithmic state diagram. Our goal is to build this circuit at the end. Given an algorithmic state machine data link path kind of a drawing, let's draw the state table or the data path table or the link path table. So what does it look like? Well, we have what kind of link paths here? We have a link path here. Let's call that one. And one that goes down here, let's call that two. One that goes this way, let's call that three. One that goes this way, let's call that four. One that goes back up here, let's call that five. And then one that goes back up here. Let's call that six. So we have one, two. Now the first two are associated with state one. Second pair are associated with state two. So these are our states. So you can see a one right here. So this is going to be associated with state one. So these are our states, initial states. And then we have our inputs. Our inputs are S, M1, and Z. And you see we're defining them for all these link paths. So in link path 1, S is a 0 right here. In link path 2, S is a 1. S is not defined anywhere else, but we've got to be really careful here. M1 is defined here, right, 0, and M1 is a 1, and Z is defined here. So we've got to be really careful that these only activate in their states. So those are our inputs. All right, and what are our outputs? Well, our outputs are going to be the next state and init, decrement, add, shift right, and complete. Our next states are going to be link path 1 goes back to 1. Link path 2 goes from 1 to 2. Link path 3 goes from 2 to 3. Okay, outputs are what? We have init, we have decrement, init is a wire and we want to set it to a zero except for in this case when we're going down link path two we want it to be zero everywhere else there's no don't cares here there's something like a don't care here on the inputs but they cause a completely different set of problems they don't help us out in our kernel map All right decrement we want to set decrement no matter what at state 2 because it's a more kind of a circuit, state 2. Add, we only want to set on link path 4. That's a melee kind of a circuit. Down here, shift right, we want to do no matter what, that's melee. And then complete, we only want to set on 6, link path 6. So the rest of these are zeros. OK, let's check our work. And everything looks perfect. So now what we want to do is build the transition table. So the transition table is, is just where we go through and we say, OK, the present state, circle 1 is going to be a 0, 0. So wherever there's a 1, we're going to write down 0, 0. And wherever there's a 2, we're going to write down 0, 1. And wherever there's a 3, we're going to write down 1, 1. That's it for the transition table. There is no implicant table because the outputs change. It's possible because 2 goes straight to 3 that we could have combined 2 and 3, but the outputs are different. 
the transition table moves to the excitation table if we choose D flip-flop, so let's do that. So now we're down here where we can build the circuit. Okay, so let's pick off the low-hanging fruit first. Complete looks like a copy of Z. As long as we're at Q1, Q2 state. Shift register looks like Q1. Add looks like M. As long as we're at the Q1 bar, Q2 state. The state right here, state 2. Decrement looks like state 2, Q1 bar, Q2. Init looks like S as long as we're at Q1 bar, Q2 bar state. D2, which is Q2 plus, is... Oh boy, it looks complicated. I'm going to have to do a K-map on this. D1, which is Q1 plus, equals the second state. So it's going to be Q1 bar Q2. So it's the same as DEC. Looking at these terms, I can see that this and this and this are all the same. All right, so let's do the K-map. We're doing a K-map of Q2. K-map of Q2. What's going to matter? Oh, I see a pattern there. I don't see this helping. I see a pattern here. So it looks like we're going to use this, these four for our K-map. All right, so here's our K-map, Q1, Q2. All right, now let's fill this table in. Zero, zero, zero. Don't care about Z. It's going to be a zero. Zero, zero, one. Don't care about Z. is going to be a one. Zero, one. Don't care about S or Z. is going to be a one. One, one, don't care about S, Z is a zero. It's going to be a one. Okay. One, one, blank, one is going to be a zero. And the state's not mentioned, so these are our don't cares. So what are our implicants? Well, we've got a big one right here which is Q1 bar Q2, same as these. We have a big one right here, which is Q1 bar S. And then we have a big one right here, which is Q2 and Z. So D2 is going to be Q1 bar S or Q1 bar Q2 or Q2 Z bar. So let's check what was actually built. So I've done that and these are the two that are different. Right here and right here. Well this completes different too. Now all these modifications, this modification, this modification, and this modification are the tension between a computer operating this circuit and a human operating this circuit. Let's just start off here with complete. As a human being, you don't want to just see this complete light flash. You want it to flash and the whole circuit to stop. This circuit's designed to go around and around in circles very efficiently. So 
before the answer is actually complete, it's signaling complete to the computer in a mealy kind of a style so that when the computer looks at the answer, it finds it without wasting a clock cycle. Any other way would slow the computer down. From a human point of view, we want to slow it down. Now the problem is this might not work if we build it because it's depending upon the simulator's sequencing of what happens on the rising edge of the clock. Now the other thing has to do with this start. This one and this one deal with a start. The human being wants to click start and then bang on the clock exactly nine times and then see the answer. You don't want to click on start, hit the clock once, and then clear start like a computer does. So I had to make a circuit right here to handle that difference. And what I want to do is just document the circuit a little bit. So what I wanted to do was handle these don't cares. This is what the computer normally does. And this is what the human wants to do. So I'm going to create a mealy kind of finite state machine. Let's say here at state A, we're at this zero. And if we get a one, we get this one right here, we're going to output a one, which is going to be the new S, and go to state B. So I'm going to replace this S column with an S prime. Let's call it S prime column. It's going to be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to change the human being's behavior into the computer's behavior. So if I have an original S, I'm going to put out an S prime of a 0. I'm only going to put out the 1 in this one particular case through link path 2. Now if I get a 0, I'm going to stay here at A. That's if I'm sitting here at 0, getting zeros all over and over and over and over and over again. And if I get to B, even though I've got a 1 coming in, I still want to output a 0. And finally, to get back to this original link path 1, after we're stuck here at link path 6, I want to be able to go back to state A. So this turned into a circuit. So here's the circuit. It has a clock and S as input. It has a clock and S as input. S prime is my output, is my prime output. So when S is a zero, we're at state A, and we're just staying there, outputting a zero. Now if I make it a one, it outputs a one momentarily. So there's my one, my mealy one, going out immediately. And then when I start clicking the clock, it'll stay, it goes back to zero. So it's staying there at zero, outputting a zero. And it's going to do that forever until I change this to a zero. And I have to go through one clock tick to get back to state zero. That's state A. Yeah. So now you've seen all the pieces and heard all the design stories.